Hey guys, uh, I was kind of sitting around, kind of reminiscing a little bit about some of the ups and downs of life uh, over the last couple of years, and I was just kind of thinking about a particular story here, um, kind of a homesteading, hunting related story, and I thought I'd kind of share it with you guys, and and uh, hopefully you guys kind of enjoy it a little bit. Uh, kind of the backstory of this uh, story, I guess, is uh, it was kind of a late fall time. Uh, we were pretty tight on money. We had at that time of our Kind of just moving out here. I shouldn't say. Well, at that time we were heating with propane, and and um, we had just kind of dumped all the free money that we had, kind of in to get our propane tank filled up. And uh, so we were pretty tight on money. We didn't have a whole lot of food set aside for the winter. I mean, I had a pretty decent duck and goose season, uh, as well as some pheasant stuff, but uh, there just wasn't there wasn't quite enough, you know, for the winter stuff. So it was kind of a big critical year of getting a deer in the, in the freezer. And uh, that year just was not going very well for me. Every time I thought something was about to happen, nothing. And every time I would put my guard down, boom, off would go a deer or something. You know, there's there was uh, one kind of field I was hunting, and every night I'd be like, all right, it's clear. I'll start heading in. It was like right at the end of shooting hours or whatever. And boom, I'd walk out in the field kind of staring in the sun. I'd be walking halfway through the field, and I'd, up you'd see the tail of the deer, and off it would go. It's like you knew that thing was sitting out there for a while, and... Uh, it's kind of just just things weren't going right so kind of getting towards the end of the season and you know it's not a very long season here in Minnesota it's late November or early November I guess and um, and I figured I'd mix it up a little bit it was a real rainy over day cast type day and I, I put my I was putting all my time in and uh, it just w wasn't going too well that week so that kind of overcast day I was kind of looking forward to because most of the year I was seeing were always right around sunset or end of shooting hour so I mixed it up a little bit I changed my location and then it was a real rainy day so I was sitting out there just getting a little tired getting a little fed up I think we had one more day after this and I was just about to get up and go in and boom out pops a deer. I'm just, I'm mean, like, I'm shaking because I'm just so excited. I'm like, I, I can't mess this up. I take my time, get everything lined up, and I shoot this thing right in the, kind of right in the front shoulder area. And I'm like, all right, this is, this is going to be it. He's just going to drop, pull the trigger, and he doesn't drop. He just takes off like a bullet. I'm like, oh, geez, it's getting late. And out here, at least, um, kind of in coyote territory, you leave your deer sitting out there overnight, uh, good chances a lot of that meat's going to be missing come morning time when you find it. So it's pretty critical finding. So now I'm starting to sweat a little bit about, you know, I got, I'm probably going to spend half the night tracking this thing. I might, I must not have got a very good shot on it. So I kind of sat around and waited and waited for a while to kind of let this thing hopefully die out, fall down, die out. So I don't, you know, jump up, spook it, and then off it goes again. So I waited for a while. And finally, I just couldn't take anymore. I think I sat there 30, 40 minutes or something. Get out of the stand, and I start racing inside. We have this big, huge, like, one million something aluminum, lumens uh, kind of spotlight thing that we always kind of use to shine out the back door just to make sure there aren't coyotes and stuff out there when we let the dogs out for the night. And, and I'm tracking around, and I'm not seeing blood anywhere. And, and uh, I couldn't find this thing. I was really starting to get nervous that it had taken off or I just missed the thing altogether. And uh, I go run inside. I grab my brother. My brother was in town for the week or whatever. And he had been sitting in playing video games and having a few beers and stuff. And just kind of relaxing. And so I track him down. And we drag him outside. And we go out there. And we, we couldn't find it. Next thing you know, like, let's go back where I thought I'd shot. And we'll start tracking it because... So reason we didn't think to kind of look in that area. Well, sure enough, it was like 10 feet in just some long grass lane right before I shot it. So we get the thing loaded up in the trailer and dragged into the bull barn. And we're like, all right, well, it's still somewhat early, 7, 8-ish or something. Let's uh, let's get this thing gutted and maybe we can even start butchering on it a little bit tonight. And uh, start getting into it. And I nick one of the in, like, intestines in there so it starts kind of getting out. And that can kind of make the meat go bad. So you got to get that cleaned up like pronto. So I run over to the hydrant in the barn and I flip that on. Nothing comes out. Like, oh, geez, what's going on? All right, maybe the line froze out here or something. So I race back inside. I'm going to go grab a bucket of water or something. No water in the house. Okay, we got to figure out what's going on. So we ended up finding out 
uh, a little kind of process elimination that the actual well pump burned out. And I'm not sure if you guys are super familiar on how these things are kind of set up, but there's basically a pump that sits way at the bottom. There's like 100 feet of line on average or something that kind of come up. And then it kind of 90s and then goes through and then pipes into the house. So what you have to do is you twist this thing that kind of hooks onto the top of the 90, you pull this latch, and then you pull the whole entire thing up. And you can't drop that thing or that whole entire well is going to, or all that stuff's going to go down and you might not be able to get it back out or you're going to do a whole lot of fishing for it. So, um, anyways, uh, we're getting close to probably an hour before stores close. You know, I think most of them close around nine, any box, you know, box harbor store. And the closest kind of town that has anything of anything that would, anything that I could use to kind of get this fixed, like a pump and, and some of the tools and stuff to kind of get this done, we're going to be closing at nine o'clock and it's like probably like eight, you know, 20, something like that. And we got like a 40 minute drive or something at least to, to get to one of these stores. So we jump in the car, race down there. We're running around the store like, all right, we need something to sanitize the well. We need, you know, some PVC pipe to get this pulled up. We need to get a pump and we need, you know, we're like we got to get everything because if this doesn't happen, we're not going to have running water until probably mid morning tomorrow after the store opens and we can get the stuff we need. So we're in that process. It kind of dawned on me that uh, some people were looking at us a little weird. After doing a little bit more investigation, kind of looked down and we're just covered in blood. You know, it looked like we came out of a murder scene. And I was pretty glad that we were buying the stuff we were buying and not something that involved some duct tape and some rope or something crazy like that. So we race home and, and, uh, you know, we quickly eat dinner and stuff, and then we're gonna—I was gonna, you know—we we're gonna go out and get the thing. I was gonna have my brother kind of help me do some of this stuff. Well, he ended up falling asleep in the process, and we could not get him up. And the two guys laying around, my wife should not have to get involved in some of these projects. So, long story short, she ended up having to come out and help me. And um, you know, she was out there laying tarps down and shining lights where I needed them, getting tools, and and uh, kind of helping me kind of get this all yanked out of there. And uh, Eventually got the thing kind of pulled out and changed out and, and uh, back in and working and stuff and uh, a little bit of an adventure, but you know, that's kind of kind of what life, I guess, throws at you at times. It was a pretty stressful night, but I look back at it now and kind of makes me laugh a little bit and stuff. You know, that's that's life, I guess. Um, you guys kind of got some stories like this? I'd love to kind of hear them in the comments below or even a video response, you know, that's that's uh, kind of the beauty of life. You know, everyone's kind of got their own experiences, which kind of helps shape who we are and, and stuff like that. And I, I kind of love hearing these type of stories. So if you guys got stuff uh, to share, I'd, I'd love to hear about them. If you guys kind of found this uh, video interesting, uh, let me know too in the comments. You know, maybe I'll make some kind of more of these story uh, uh, kind of videos and stuff if it's something you guys kind of enjoy. Um, anyways, hope you guys found it entertaining. If so, uh, let me know by clicking that thumbs up and subscribing. Thanks for watching.